Ani, bonjour, good morning. I'm so glad to be here with you, joining us on this beautiful fall Saturday. You look so beautiful with the light streaming through on, on your faces. What a wonderful time it is to be together. I want to pause for a moment in gratitude for the gifts of the land and have us remember that this morning we had that first sweet breath of, of morning air and a drink of cool water and the companionship of clouds and geese and one another. I have a special gratitude for the invitation to collaborate with the Spectral Quartet. What a joy. Um, it has been an immense privilege and honor and just witnessing the, the rehearsal. Um, it's, it's so amazing you are in for such an amazing experience. For me, I think about art as a way of reciprocity, the way in which human people can give back for all the gifts that we are showered with. And there's a way in which this music feels to me like a gift for the land. Just as we give gratitude to the earth in this music, I think I hear the earth being grateful for us. The city lights blind us to the guidance of the glittering unseen stars. Like the drone and hum of human busyness deafens us to the trill and the groan of the earth. We might tune out the traffic, but still the loudest thing is our own thoughts rattling and spinning inside our heads. Inside the skull, the mind is alive with our own story, the mind is alive. Every day we walk in the rhythm of our own footsteps. But this, this is not every day. This is space set aside for attention, to be in this place, this place, that was singing ancient airs long before your footsteps trod this path. This is not every day. This is time set aside to be here, in this moment, that will never come again. This is the power of ceremony, when attention opens us to voices not our own, who have something to say to each other and to us. The lakeshore is alive with music. The lakeshore is alive. Send your attention out from within the confines of your skull. Send it outside. Open and attentive. Let the lake wind blow thought away when it comes. And listen to a story not your own. This is not every day, but it could be.
Listen for the echoes of what is no longer here, the drift of Potawatomi songs across the water. Ish Pash Kosawaga, the murmured Omimi of passenger pigeons, the crackle of fire through Indian grass, the cajoling of bobolinks, the lamentation of milkweed for monarchs. Listen for what remains so that we might hold it close against the grind of bulldozers. Toads calling, cricket legs scraping, jay rasp, cottonwood flutter tongue, needle whispers, seeds bursting, spores popping, the twang of grapevine plucked by the wind, sand sanding, and always the sigh of the breath plant breath for animal breath. Grass breathes a grasshopper into being. Beetle exhales, willow inhales. And you too, a part of the great poem, the land breathes you into its embrace.
Gichigami, the big water, Lake Michigan, the realm of turtles and lake trout, mayfly, myriad orbs of plankton singing, loons, white caps rolling like wind on prairie grass, modweoshka, says the water to the shore. The water is alive with movement, the water is alive. Ish, Pash, Koshiwaga, the place of high grass. If you stand among them, you can discern the different sounds of the collective swoosh. Stems clack together at the base. The waist-high leaves rub with a grasshopper buzz, and the seed heads are a soft hiss dissipating in the air. Wild indigo pods rattle in a dry wind. The sound of the prairie is like the inhale and the exhale of the land itself. The prairie is alive with vibration. The prairie is alive. Bronzed grasses, cloud shadows running across the hills like a herd of buffalo, dragonfly wings, meadow larks, and the wind coming through. Seeds ripening in layers of burgundy, caramel, and gold between the warm black earth and the sun. The sun, the sun, the sun in a faultless blue sky. The sun made the grasses, the grasses made buffalo. The buffalo made flowers, and the flowers made butterflies. The buffalo made people, and the people made fire. Fire made prairie, and prairie made fire. The wind made the soil, and the soil made grass. Grass made grasshoppers, and the hoppers made larks. Larks brought the seeds, and the seeds brought the voles. The voles made the hawk, and the hawk called the warning. And we, we have unmade it all.
Spider web spun between grass and twig vibrates in the stretch of the wind. Pluck one strand and all quiver in response. There is no such thing as solitude. We are not alone. We breathe in the company of multitudes, our relatives. In the call and response between land and people, the land knows you, even when you are lost. We are all bound together by a covenant of reciprocity, plant breath for animal breath, winter and summer, predator and prey, grass and fire, night and day, living and dying. Water knows this, clouds know this, soil and rock know they are in a continuous circle of making, unmaking, and making again the earth. We live in a moral landscape. The land is reading us law over and over, but we forget to listen. Our elders say that ceremony is the way we remember to remember. We remember the dazzling gifts of the earth, just as they teeter on the cusp of undoing, maybe just in time, or maybe too late. More than anything, I want to hear a great song of thanksgiving rise on the wind. I think that is the song that might save us. Whatever our gift, we are called to give it.
secret language of flying creatures. Goldfinches bounce their wavy song above the grass. Chickadees gather the kinfolk round the drooping seed heads. Crows speak prophecy into the wind. Listen long enough and sounds become voices. Voices become conversations of which you might think you're not a part. And yet, there is a language that hovers at the edge of consciousness, almost familiar, storytelling in a language we ache to remember. Crickets call, vibrating their legs and vibrating the air. What is the difference between a sound and a voice, between a voice and a song? They call to each other with the intention of making more. Are they talking to us, too? Do you remember that page in the old farmer's almanac where you can calculate the air temperature by the rate of cricket chirps? Listen. Hotter, hotter, hotter. What is our call in response? The air is alive with meaning. The air is alive.
Open and attentive, the land calls to us, even when we are lost. Let the lake wind blow consciousness outside your head, to meld in the air with others, to lift a swallow skyward and know the yearnings of elms and your own. Listen, listen. Listen until belonging washes over you in a wave. This is not every day, but it could be. <laughs> <laughs> 